Folks, you're, you're, you're all very welcome here this evening to uh, Matilda, to the final night then of Matilda. A special welcome to the parents and to the grandparents, and grandparents, a particular special welcome to you. The children just adore you, uh, and very often you're the people I hear most about uh, in, in school. Uh, to family members, to friends and school governors that we have here this evening, and a special welcome to anybody who's travelled here for, for a big distance. I certainly know we've got Donegal people here this evening then, uh, and it's lovely to see you all here then. Look, I have a couple of wee jobs to do. This is my air steward job. There are fire escapes and there are two to the rear here. Um, should anything happen, we will look after the children ourselves and you would just make your way through those two uh, fire escape doors. Look, mobile phones. Uh, mobile phones need to be on silent or need to be turned off in order to give the children an opportunity to be heard. And tonight is a particularly packed house, uh, so it's important that the children are heard. The show is on two acts, and there will be a 15-minute interval uh, in between, uh, and we will do the ballot draw at that stage. Now, I have a couple of quite important safeguarding information that I need to do with you. There is to be no photography or no recording of the show uh, by yourselves. Um, uh, you do not have the right to the, take the picture because it's going to have pictures of other children in the background and that sh that, those pictures should not be loaded to, uploaded to social media. We have taken loads of photographs. It will go live this evening, of photographs backstage, photographs of the children in costumes. And we also have Curly this evening who's going to take a couple of photographs. But we also have Aid this evening who's going to record the show for us. Um, and parents in P5, P6 and P7, I will send you a link to that show uh, via Seesaw for your family's use. And you won't hear me say this very often, I'm not going to charge you for it. <laughs> so you make, sure, you make sure you enjoy it. And I hope by doing all of that, we can keep the safeguarding arrangements correct here within the school. Now, at the end of the evening, um, Mrs. Duffin's class will be collected at the back door here of the parish hall. P6 parents, you disappointed me yesterday. You never listened to one word I said. P6 parents, stay here. The children are going to come in to you. And for the P7 parents, you collect the children just at the back door here of the, of the minor hall. Um, so, look, it is a packed house this evening. If you're feeling uncomfortable or warm at any stage, just, point, just draw the attention of one of the staff here. We have plenty of cold water uh, in the kitchen should you feel uncomfortable. Um, look, well done on getting a ticket. This is the hottest ticket in town. Hotter than Springsteen. Hotter than the Munster Hurling final. Uh, and for all of you who disobeyed my rules about only ask for three tickets, well done. Um, and there's one particular family along the front here, and there's a long line of them. And I can see that they haven't listened to one word I've said. Um, look, do you see yesterday evening, and I mean this, the audience really made this yesterday evening. They really reacted to the children. They really got involved. And honestly, the children fed off it. Now, I know by looking at some of you, you'll be even better than yesterday's, uh, than yesterday's audience. But it does work, folks. So look, I want you to enjoy Matilda, the mini musical then, OK? Thanks very much, folks. Longer doctor, I've got a plane to catch at three. I'm being in the biannual international amateur salsa and boring championships in Paris. What is it? What's wrong with me? Mrs. Wormwood, do you really have no idea? Uh, gas? Mrs. Wormwood, I want you to think very carefully. Am I? Am I? Look, am I fat? You're pregnant. What? I've already got a baby. I don't want another one. You're nine months pregnant. Oh my good lord. What about the biannual international amateur salsa and boring championships in Paris? This is very inconvenient. How am I to the Spanish bits with this inside my belly? Follow me, Mrs. Wormwood. <sighs> Come along, Mrs. Wormwood. Nurse, I'm still wearing my new slippers. Jeez, give the girl a break. One, two, three. Where is he? Where's my son? Uma! 
my good lord, what is that? Excuse me, Mr. Wormwood. I said, what is that? Here, get out of my face. Look what you've done, you stupid woman. This boy is not a proper new no boy. Mr. Wormwood, this child is a girl. A beautiful, precious, dangerous girl. I wonder if there's still time for the biannual international amateur salsa and foreign championships in Paris. Dance competition's over. You missed it. Look, I don't suppose you could exchange for a boy. Go on, spoil the missus. What do you think? This is the worst day of my life. I don't want you to eat Well, there you have it. Matilda was born. Everyone is born. But not everyone is born the same. Some will grow up to be butchers. Or beggars. Or even candlestick makers. But some will only be only good at making jello salad. But one way or another, every human being is unique. For better or for worse. Most parents believe their children are the most beautiful creatures ever to grace the planet. Whilst others take a less emotional approach. High engineer Wormwood lived in a very nice house in a very nice neighbourhood, but were not very nice people. The Wormwoods were so wrapped up in their own silly lives, they barely noticed they had a daughter. Had they paid attention to it all, they would have realised she was a rather extraordinary child. They call their daughter... Matilda! Yes sir, that's right sir. 155 brand new luxury cars sir. Are they good runners? Of course they are good runners. They are fantastic runners. Uh, yes, sir, indeed, sir. Now, how much exactly are we talking about? Hundreds? Thousands? Millions? Ali, look at this. She's reading the book. That's not normal for a five-year-old. I think she might be an idiot, Ali. Listen to this. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. <laughs> Stop scaring him with that book, boy. But I'm a girl. And you hear me and you keep around telling me stories, Ali. Stories? Who wants stories? I mean, it's just not normal for a girl to be all thinking. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, I'm good enough to call you back. Would you be quiet? I'm trying to pull off the biggest business deal of my life enough to listen to all you whining. It's your fault. You spend us into trouble and expect me to get us out. What about me then? I thought a whole host to look after. Dinners don't make the earth himself, you know. Well, I'm out to beat my wits, and I shan't be talking to you for, I shan't be talking to you for the rest of the evening, you horrid little man. Wait, I'm going to make us rich. Rich? How rich? Oh, very rich. Those Russian businessmen I was just speaking to are very stupid. And your genius husband is going to sell them 155 knackered old cars as brand new luxury vehicles. But you're liar, Dad. The cars break down. I don't care about fear. Fear doesn't get you anyway, thick and a twit brain. Hmm, I believe that when I see it. You made me very upset, Mr. Warren, and if we're not to look at your ugly old face for the rest of the evening, don't even think about it. This is all your fault, you with your stupid books and your stupid reading. Well, I didn't do anything. That's not right. Right, I'll tell you what's right. You're off to school in a few days, and I know your headmistress, Miss Agatha Trunchbull. I've told all about you and your smarty pants out ears. She's a great, big, scary woman. Used to compete in the Olympics throwing the hammer. Imagine what she could do to a horrible, squeaky little goblin child like you, boy. I'm a girl. Uh, get to bed, you little bookworm.
Good air means good brain. Now, the secret to my success in business is oil of violets, air tonic for men. A man simply cannot fail when he looks like this. What you think? Your hair, it's green. <laughs> oh my good lord, my hair, it's green. Is there a part in there, son? I just said to air screen, why on earth would you want green hair? I don't want green hair, I don't know how this happened. Maybe some of Mummy's brookside hair dye by mistake. That's exactly what you've done, you stupid little man. Oh my hair, oh my beautiful lovely hair. Oh no, I've got my deal for ashes today. What am I going to do? I know, I know what you can do. What, what can I do? You can, you can turn to an owl. Yes, that's it, I can do You fool, the boys are only get out of my way. Mum, would you like to hear a story? Don't be disgusting. Go and creep them back to the library of yours. They're so you like them in the school. 
Rebel. Matilda, what are you doing here in the library again? You and me just left. Won't your mother and father miss you? Yes, I mean, my mum wanted me to stay at home with her. She just hates it when I go out. She misses me so much. Dad, too. He loves having me around. But I think it's best for grown-ups to have their own space sometimes. Don't you? Your parents must be so proud to have a girl as clever as you. And you tell them lots of stories like you do with me. I love your stories, Matilda. Oh, goodbye, Miss Honey. Goodbye, Mrs. Phelps. See you next week. Good luck with the tall story. Thank you. As I was saying, Matilda. Who was that? That lady. That was Miss Honey. She's going to be your new teacher. That lady? That lady's my... Yes, your teacher. Now look, are you going to finish that story you were telling me about? Which one, Mrs. Phelps? I have so many. The one in your dreams, Matilda. Let me remind you. of the most greatest circus performers in the world. There was an escapologist who could escape from any lock that was ever invented, and an acrobat who was so skilled it seemed as if she could actually fly. They fell in love and got married. They performed some of the most incredible feats together. People would travel hundreds of miles to see them. Kings, queens, celebrities, and even astronauts. They loved each other very much. We have everything that the world has to offer, except a family of our own. Her loving husband replied, Patience, my love, patience. Will I go in, Matilda? Yes, please, Mrs. Phelps. At night, they listened to the silence of their big, empty house. They imagined how beautiful it would be, filled this with the sound of children playing. They promised themselves, if they were ever to have a little girl, they'd work call him something beautiful, something sweet. She would be meek and mild like her mother, but strong and brave like her father. Look at the time, Matilda. You best be off. You can't be late on your first day of school. Thanks, Miss Phelps. Goodbye, Mrs. Phelps. Goodbye, Matilda. See you next week. Oh, what am I going to do with that girl? if you put your mind to it. Good morning, children. My name is Miss Honey. Good, Good morning, Miss Honey. And today's a very special day. Your first day of school. Now, does anyone know the two times tables? Wonderful, Matilda. Please say as much as you can. And don't worry if you can only do a few. Eight times she is 16. Nine times she is 18. 10 times she is 20. 11 times she is 22. 12 times she is 24. Do I go on? Well, my word. 13 times she is 26. 14 times she is 28. 15 times she is 30. 16 times she is 32. Stop, stop. Good heavens. How far can you go? I don't know. Quite a long way, I think. Do you think you could tell me what 2 times 28 is? 56. My, my. Now this is much harder, so don't worry if you don't get it. 2 times 487, if you take your time. 974. No way! Let's leave maths and look at reading. Now, can anyone read this? Matilda, again. I can read words. So Matilda, you can read words. Yes, well, I needed to learn to read words so that I could read sentences. Because, basically, a sentence is just a big bunch of words. And if you can't read sentences, you've got no chance with books. And have you read a whole book yourself, Matilda? Oh, yes, more than one. I love books. Last week, I read quite a few. A few? In, in a week? My, my, so what books did you read? Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist. Jane Eyre, Tess of the D'Urbervilles, Lord of the Rings, Kim, The Invisible Man, Secret Garden, Crime 
and punishment. And can that class? You don't want to disturb Miss Trunchbull. She'll be enjoying her slice of chocolate cake. I need her how angry she gets when she's interrupted. Yes, Miss Honey. <laughs> Off you go, children. Get on with it. Yes, 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 Miss Trunchbull. There's a, there's a little girl called Matilda Wormwood, and I think she'll say as Mr. Harry Wormwood owns Wormwood Motors. Excellent man. Tells me to watch out for a brat. Says she's a real wart. Oh, no, her mistress. I don't believe Matilda's that kind of child at all. What is this motto, honey? Bambinatum est megitum. Bambinatum est megitum. Children are maggots. In fact, it must have been her who put that stink bomb under my desk this morning. And have her for that. Thank you for suggesting it. But I didn't, Miss Trunchbull. Matilda Woman is a genius. Nonsense. Haven't I just told you that she's a gangster? A weasel? So she's learned a few tricks? Oh, but she can read. So can I. I have to tell you, Mistress, uh, that in my opinion, this all going to be placed in the top form with the older children. What? But she's a squid, a shrimp, an unhatched tadpole. We cannot simply place it in the top form with the senior children. What kind of society would that be? What about rules, honey? Rules. I believe that Matilda Wormwood is an exception to the rules. An exception to the rules in my inside your head give you a headache? I mean, it's got to hurt. All squished in there. No, it's fine. I think they're just fit. Right. Well, I better hang around just in case. If they start to squeeze out of your ears, I think you're going to need some help. I'm more attention you, by the way, and I think it's probably for the best if we become best friends. Hi, me. Hi, me. Please. Someone pulled a whole cast separately in the chair and let's go up. 
her nigger states not to see. So I do that I did it, but I never know she's after me. trying to scare us. And we told her that she's going to put me in the chuggy. What? What's the chuggy? They say it's a cupboard in her office where she throws children into. She's lined up with nails and spikes and bits of broken glass. Disorder narcolepsy. The condition is characterized by the sufferer experiencing bouts of chronic fatigue and falling suddenly asleep, often without knowing or any warning at all. You see, he fell asleep and we put him under the coats for safekeeping, didn't we? Didn't we? Yes. You'll probably think he's in bed when he wakes up. Is it time for school yet, Mum? Excuse me, honey. Where is the word? Yes, Miss Trunchbull. So you admit it to do you? I thought what I didn't say anything. This clot, this foul kabunga, is none other than a disgusting criminal, a denizen of the underworld, a member of the mafia. This morning you sneak like a slimy serpent into the kitchen and stole a piece of my private chocolate cake, didn't you? No, I did not. Miss Trunchbull, my child's been here all morning. Standing up, little spitball, are you? Where this crime took place before school started, and therefore she is guilty. Okay, look, all right, I stole the cake, and honestly, I was really, definitely, so off. Almost forget about holding up. Maybe, but the thing was, I was having a lot of trouble with the bell, you see, and the church was cake was so good that I got about too quick, and now it's beginning to fight back. Uh, yes, you are, because you are a fiend, you are a crook, you are a thief, and I shall crush you, I shall pound you, I shall consign you to the seventh step of hell, child. You shall be, you shall be destroyed. Exist as my big, huge, beautiful chocolate burp after the crow. 
person is Spongebob and that person is me. I just have to cow. I know, let's go! <laughs> Matilda's best friend. There's a bit coming up that's all about me. Well, not exactly about me, but I play a big part in it. But I'm not going to say what happens because I don't want to spoil it for you. All right, look. I volunteer to give the trench a jug of water and on the way back, no, I don't want to say any more because I don't want to ruin it. Well, on the way back I find a newt. A newt is like a really ugly lizard that lives in water. So I pick it up and... No, I don't want to say any more. We're going to put them in the transport jug. It's going to be brilliant.
future. Bet busy right now. Oh, we'll only take a moment. Come in if you must. So what do you want, Miss Chutney? Oh, it's Miss Honey. Whatever, get on with it. Well, as you know, Matilda's in the bottom class, and children in the bottom class aren't really expected to read. Well then, stop reading. Lord knows we've tried. Look, I'm not in, a, I'm not in favour of girls getting on clever pants, Miss Hussey. A girl should be thinking about makeup and hair dye. Looks are more important than books. Now look at me. And look at you. You choose books. I choose looks. But Matilda can calculate complicated figures in her head in an instant. Well, that's not very fair. On who, Mrs. Wormwood? Duh! The guys who invented calculators. Oh, Mrs. Wormwood, I don't think you understand at all. Her mind is incredible. Mind? Her mind? You really don't know anything, do you? May I please remind you, darling? It's looks, not books. I can see we're not going to agree here. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Wormwood. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Miss Chutney. Everyone, gather round, gather round. Family meeting. Not you, boy. I want my family to share my triumph. Again, not you, boy. Daz, I'm a girl. Yeah, whatever. Right, so, listen to this. Somehow I had to sell 155 knackered old cars with hundreds of thousands of miles on them by 12 o'clock last night. Firstly, who's stupid enough to buy a car from me with that many miles clocked up on them? And secondly, how could I make those miles miraculously disappear? Well, suddenly I had the most genius idea. I ran into the workshop, I grabbed a drill, and using my incredible mind, I attached a drill to the speedometer of the car and whacked it in reverse. Within seconds, I had reduced the mileage in those old rust buckets to practically nothing. I did it to every single car. Ten minutes later, the Mafia shows up. Great, big, nasty face tapes. Expensive suits, dark glasses. I don't know who they thought they were in Ryan Earth. They were in sunglasses at 12 o'clock at night. I have no idea. They're nocturnal. They're my for no nocturnal. I saw it a program last night. Mum, that was badgers. It was a program about badgers. Same thing. And did it work, Mr. Wormwood? Oh, yes. But you've cheated them, Dad. They've trusted you and you've cheated them. What is the matter of you? What have you done to deserve a child like you? You sneaky little goblin. Thank you know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to go down to that library of yours and tell that old bag that never to be let in there again. What? No. Please don't. And if she don't, I'll have her fired. I'm going to never read another stinking book as long as I live. It's me, Miss Honey, that you have no idea what you are doing. You believe in kindness, fluffiness, books and stories. This is not a teaching. To teach the child, you must first break the child. Quiet, you maggots. No more speaking, Miss Trunchbull. Miss Honey, please understand that when I say quiet, you maggots, you are entirely included in that statement. Where is my jug of water? This school of late has started wreaking quiet maggots when I'm speaking. Quiet, sir! I don't think this is teaching at all. I think it's just cruelty. That is because, Miss Honey, you are pathetic. You are wet. You are weak. You are, in fact, a snivelling little snot. Newt. There's a newt inside my... you. Me? No, not me. What? I didn't do anything. You did this, you vile, repulsive, malicious little sinner. Don't Miss Trunchbull, stop that hurt. Stop Miss Trunchbull, stop. We are just getting started. No, Miss Trunchbull, don't, please. 
you pull your ear off. I have discovered, Miss Honey, through many years of experimentation, that the ears of small girls do not come off. They stretch. In fact, I think I can feel them stretching even now. <laughs> Leave me alone, you big fat bully. How dare you? You are not fit to be at this school. You ought to be in prison. The deepest, darkest, darkest prison. I shall have you wheeled out, strapped to a trolley with a muzzle over your mouth. You know what the problem with children these days? Their parents seem to like them. They think they are funny, cute, delightful little miracles. You are not miracles. You are vile and repellent, sticky fingers little snot goblins, and it's my job to crush you. You're just like your father, a crook. Last night, I was driving home in that mon monstrosity he sold me, and the engine fell out. Are you listening, you vomit sent up, you be snot stain? Miss Honey has allowed your weakness and fell to permeate through the school, and you, madam, are its beating heart. There's nothing I shall not do, no punishment I shall not inflict, no ear I shall not stretch, and no finger I shall not snap to defeat you. Yes, I shall defeat you in exaltation. Are you listening, Wormwood? I said, are you listening?
die I'm born Like I said Into the eye of the Interesting. I think we all better go home while we still can. Do you believe me, Miss Honey? That I moved it with my eyes. Am I strange? I think. How about a nice cup of tea? What do you think it is, Miss Honey? This thing with my eyes? Well, I'm not going to pretend I know what it is, but I don't think it's something you should be frightened of. I think it's something to do with that incredible mind of yours. You mean there's no room in my head for all my brains, so you have to squish out through my eyes? Well, not exactly. You certainly are a special girl, Matilda. I met your mother. She's unusual. What about your father? Is he very proud to have a daughter as clever as you? Oh, uh, yes. He's very proud. He's very, very, very proud. He's always saying, Matilda, I'm so proud to have a daughter. That's not true, Miss Honey. That's not what he says. He's not proud at all. He calls me a liar, a cheat, and a nasty little creep. I see. Here we are, home sweet home. Are you poor, Miss Honey? Yes, I am. Very poor. Don't they pay teachers very well? No, they don't actually. But I'm even proud of the most because of other reasons. You see, I used to love my mum and my ass to aunt, and I wanted to escape. When one day I was out walking and I came across this old shed, I fell completely in love with it and I ran straight to the farmer and begged him to let me move in. He thought I was mad, but he agreed and I've lived here ever since. But Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. Why not? I'm not strong like you, Matilda. You see, my father died when I was young. Magnus was his name. He was very kind and loved me very much. But when he was gone, my aunt became my legal guardian. She was cruel, mean, and horrible. And when I got my job as a teacher, she presented me with a bell for looking after me for all those years. She'd run everything down. Every tea bag, every electricity bell, every tin of beans. And then out of nowhere, she'd be just a document saying my father had given her his house. My house, Matilda. The house I grew up in. Did he really do that? Magnus, did he really just give her his house? I do not know. Like, I should just not believe that he would have... that he would have killed, killed himself, and that's what she said that happened. What? You think... you think she didn't mean, don't you, Miss Honey? You think your aunt did it? I cannot say. All I know is that years being bullied by, by that woman. She made me pathetic. I was trapped. And that's why you live here. <laughs>
she died. You see, she was an, an acrobat. Yes, yes she was. And my father was an escapologist. Matilda, how did you know that? So they were your parents. What? Who? The people in my dreams. The people in my story, Miss Honey. What story? I've been telling a story to Mrs. Phelps in the library and I thought I was making it up. But it's real. It's your life. I've seen your life, Miss Honey. You've seen my life? She didn't mean Let's go to the police. We can't, Matilda. We've no evidence. Well, we can just tell them. Tell them your aunt did it. We can't. It'd be my word against hers. But why? She was cruel to you. She beat you. She bullied you. She shouted at you. She locked you up in tiny covers and threw you into the cellar. Stop, Matilda, please. Miss Honey, your aunt's a murderer. She killed Magnus. Who is she? A contract is a contract is a contract. No. Yes, Miss Trunchbull. Good morning, honey. After our little chat this morning, I thought it best that I took your class for the remainder of the day. Shh! I've heard you before, honey, and I'm not afraid to do it again. Now, in this world, maggots, there are two types of human beings. There are the winners, and there are the losers. And I am a winner. Today, this class is going to have a very specific, special spelling test. And any child who gets one single letter wrong shall go to choke you. You, yes, you, spell, oh now let me see, spell newt. Newt, N-E-W-T, newt. Nonsense, Miss Honey is far too soft and peachy to be good at anything. Any moron can see that. You, turn around and spell the one thing that you all are. Revolting. Revolting. R-E-V-O-L-T-I-N-G. Revolting. Yes. You're cheating. Of course he's not cheating. He's simply spelling the word. These little specks of dust can't be this clever. They are worms. I taught them. That's all. With kindness, patience and respect. How dare you bring those words into my classroom, madam. You know nothing of teaching and I shall prove it. Spell. Let me see. 
I make a chair. Come in there, let's speak to Candice kind of Tim and Nurses. Well, that's not a word. You just made it up. Spell it. Or gay tea shaky. And I shall warn you, it has silent letters. Is you do me? Nay, I'm so sorry. It is a silent Z. You're going to shake it. Cat, C A F. Cat, I got it wrong, miss. You're going to have to put me in Chucky too. Dog, D Y P, dog, and me. Table, S A B L Y, and me. What are you doing? What's going on? Stop this. Sit down. You can't put us all in the Chucky. Oh, yes, I can. You see, maggots. In this world, there are two types of human beings. There are the winners and there are the losers. And I am... Chalk! Look! The chalk! What? It's moving. Look, it's writing something. What the devil? Who, who's doing that? No one. No one's doing anything. Look! I go first. This is Magnus. Give my little bumblebee back her house and her money. Then get out of town. If you don't, I will get you. I will get you like you got me. That is a promise.
tokens were immediately destroyed as the new headmistress took over. And her name was... Miss Honey! And it's often said that it was the best school in all the land. And do you know something else? Matilda never again had to move things with her mind. I thought it was because her thoughts were being challenged. But she said it was because she no longer had need for her superpowers. Sometimes I would look at her, the girl who had done so much to help others, but sadly was stuck with parents who were mean, cruel, and called her names. I would feel my blood boil, and I would just wish that I could do something. So, this is the end. And I wish so much that I could tell you that this story has a happy ending. And I wish so much that I could tell you Matilda got the love she deserved. But perhaps the truth is... No all stories have happy endings. Don't just stand there gawping. We're going to Spain. Spain? Why? I love it here. Because this idiot, this nit, this twit Bruno husband seemed to think it was a good idea to sell 155 burned out old cars to the Mafia. I didn't know they were the flaming Mafia, did I? Come on, boy, we're leaving forever and we're never coming back. Wait, let me tell to stay here with me. I beg your pardon. Miss Ormond, I would love to take Matilda, if she would like to stay with me, that is. I would look after her with love and care, and I'd pay for everything. Would you like that, Matilda? Oh, hold on a minute. You mean you want us to leave our daughter here with you? With Miss Chutney. Dad, you called me your daughter. Gosh, yes, I did. Well, do you want to stay here with Miss Honey Matilda? Yes, yes, I do! Well, we are a bit sure of him, so take her! Thank you, Mum! Thank you, Dad! Would you help hurry up and sell your mind? The man is on her and I don't want to miss her flight. I have a tan to up, and you need a haircut. Well, Matilda, is this how your story ends? No, Miss Honey. Let me finish it. Finally, the little girl found the love she deserved in a place she could call home. And the acrobat and SK Polar just stole the with a loving child of her own. Finally, they found each other. Yes, they found each other. And, and they both lived happily ever after. The end.
folks, um, thank you very much. Um, I was watching the children while they were watching you, and when you got to your feet, the delight in those children's faces was absolutely terrific then. Boys and girls, you know I'm going to say a few words now because it's important that I say a few words to your parents and to everybody who's helped us here. But first of all, and most importantly to you, uh, you've worked so hard over this past couple of months, but you've kept that going while you've kept your schoolwork going. And in particular to my primary sixes, well done to you, sticking at those tests, even with this going on, and even this week in class and in homework, still keeping it going in June. And that's really important because schoolwork comes first. Uh, so well done on that. Uh, Children, I'm proud of you, and you know I'm going to say this for three reasons. And the first of all is, is the drama, the acting, and the singing. I think that's absolutely magnificent. But you'll know there's other things that I'm proud of you too. Secondly, for coming together. Coming together as a class. Coming together as a group to work together. That's really important. It's really important in school, and it's really important in life. But perhaps for me, and I'm sure for many of your parents, the most important thing is that you pushed yourself forward and you went on that stage. And for some of you, that was easy. Some of you were born to be on a stage. Some of you just need an audience. <laughs> but for some of the rest of you, that was hard and that was a challenge. And to those children in particular, I am really, really proud of you then. So for that group of children, can we give a big round of applause, please? <laughs> Children, this is my opportunity now just to say a few words to the adults in the room and then I will come back to you then. Look, uh, this production and the West End style production that we have here with the lights and, the, and uh, the sound effects and everything, it was only possible with the support of our sponsors. So I am very grateful for the work then of our sponsors. They put a huge amount of money into this and we simply couldn't have done it without them. I'd also like to thank our production team then this evening and that's Warwick Avenue Productions. And we have Claire on sounds and Mark on lights. But none of this would be possible um, without Katie. Katie, would you like to come forward then? Because we have a wee token of thank you on behalf of all of the children. Now, Katie, you're good, but it's not all about you. <laughs> One day we were in, the, we were in here practicing, uh, and I said, Katie, and Katie being a dramatic person, she thought it was all about her. I was actually talking to the real Katie, who is standing behind you at this moment. Then. So we have two Katies, and uh, little Katie is going to present a bunch of flowers then to our director, Katie. Katie, would you pass those over for me, Pat? Kitty, we have, and I'm going to speak about teachers in a second, but I'll give you a compliment from a very talented teacher. And I did say to her, do you think you could have done that? And she said, I've learned so much from Katie. And that is from a really talented teacher. So that is absolutely a brilliant compliment. Boys and girls, what do we think of Katie? Amazing? Let's give Katie a big round of applause. Uh, Ed alone, uh, thank you very much for all of your work in the, in the production and I'm glad I've called you between one of your many trips around Ireland and the world then. So uh, thank you for that then. Um, boys and girls, you'll know that at yesterday's show, I in particular took the time to thank your classroom assistants and your classroom assistants have been amazing. Um, but tonight I'm going to take the opportunity to also thank the teaching staff um, and to my teaching colleagues uh, on both sides of this room. I appreciate everything you've done for us this year. All the little extras, children, and there are lots of actors, extras. When we think 19 after-school clubs this year, all the school teams 
and we're pretty good school teams. That all comes about because of the extra commitment to your teachers, to the trips and to the residentials then. So on behalf of the teachers, uh, we will, I, I wouldn't mind if you would, you wouldn't mind just stepping forward or even a wee wave if you like them, but we'll start in primary five with Mrs. Duffin then. Mrs. Duffin, where are we at the moment then? <laughs> She's behind us. Just miss. Uh, she's not that shy in a camogie field. <laughs> uh, which leads me to another camogie player who I know wasn't that shy either, uh, and is our primary sex teacher, and that is Mrs. McAllister. Mrs. McAllister. <laughs> and to our primary seven teacher, Mrs. Gormley. And I'll finish with just one wee story about, uh, about my teaching and classroom assistant colleagues. Uh, for the, the work that went on backstage, um, there's amazing, it wasn't just, it isn't a choky backstage. Nobody's sat and told to keep quiet and not move. There's been games, there's been memory games, there's been battleships, there's been all sorts of things prepared to keep those children entertained whenever they're off stage then. And I really appreciate because that's just a little extra mile that you have gone for those children then. So, uh, boys and girls, will we give our teachers and assistants a round of applause then. I'd also like to thank uh, our caretaker Steve and to Tricia and uh, Denise uh, for cleaning and having this hall ready for us. But I am going to turn now to um, our secretary, to Denise. Boys and girls, we'll just look over then towards Denise. Denise, give us a wave there, would you? Um, as a teacher, you'll maybe get to know the, the children for the year, but Denise has had to, known the children then for seven years. She knows everything about them. She knows their wee needs. She knows their mommy's telephone number. <laughs> and in the case of some of the children up here, she knows it by heart. <laughs> and even small things, like if a dinner's on, she'll know that somebody doesn't like that dinner, so, um, and she'll try to organize something else for them then. So, Denise, thank you very much. Can I, can I also thank Anthony on behalf of the parish? Uh, we would be lost without this hall. So many things in PE and shows happen because of this hall. Uh, and please God, in a couple of years' time, we will have a hall of our own. But at the moment, we depend so much on the parish. So thank you very much to Anthony. And I don't know if he's in attendance this evening. We'll give Anthony a round of applause, please. <laughs> No, they're speaking right. And I promise you, this is the final one because I didn't take the lead on this. Uh, the, the lead was taken to us by Mrs. McNichol from the, the planning and the setting up of it right through to these final shows then. So that's to our vice principal. And I actually don't know where she is at the moment. She's maybe at the back here. Uh, we have Mrs. McNichol. We'll give Mrs. McNichol a big round of applause. <laughs> now... I auditioned for the part that this young lady has up here, and she's just rolling her eyes again because she knows what's coming. But for about three months, I've been calling your children maggots and vipers and snakes and all sorts of horrible names. So tonight is the last time I get to do that. Are you maggots ready? I would like you to send your parents and your family home happy with the finale to our show, Matilda. Will you do that for me? Yeah. And we'll catch you this on screen then. Um, look, folks, thank you very much. Uh, this has been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you next week then at Sports Day, and hopefully the weather will be good then for us then. But tonight, for the final time, our finale to Matilda. Well done, boys and girls.